Okay, we've got our HTML set up. Now what do you do? In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the different phases and stages of an actual project, from the planning phase to the development phase to actually deploying. I'm not going to go too deep into each topic, but we'll be covering the general flow of how a project should be. I'm here in WebStorm, which is my code editor of choice. Don't feel bad if you're using Atom or Visual Studio Code or Notepad++. Doesn't really matter. We're just going to be writing code. Um, we're not going to be doing any editor-specific stuff. Um, I just feel more comfortable in WebStorm. I'm going to just be writing out some comments in this JavaScript file. No JavaScript yet. We are going to plan out our next steps. The first thing that we need to talk about is coming up with an idea. What are we going to build? That's the biggest question in any project. Sometimes that'll come from the client that you're building for. They'll have the idea already. You might even need to come up with an idea for the client. They might come to you with a problem um, that you need to solve and you come up with the idea to solve that problem. You might not, not even do any of this. You might have other people, uh, project managers who are doing this, and you're just the developer. But you do need an idea. Everybody needs an idea to build. Um, my recommendation as you're starting out to learn is to pick an idea that you can replicate in many different languages, scenarios that you can learn in. I like to think of like a to-do list or a calculator. Um, because I can build a to-do list in JavaScript, HTML, CSS, I could build a to-do list in Swift on an iPhone or something like that. I could also build a to-do list in Angular, which would be different than building just with JavaScript. Uh, but pick something that you want to do. Another idea might be a calculator. You can build a calculator in the web page and um, replicate that across all of your learning experiences. That way you can compare and contrast, see which one you like. Um, it, pick something that involves a little bit of functionality. You could also add in some design. Uh, really, whatever you want. But you just got to come up with an idea. Next, we need to talk about requirements. Our site is going to have requirements, or our app is going to have requirements. Any job is going to have a list of requirements for the app or website that you're building. These requirements might include, if you're building a calculator, might include um, like what kind of operations do we need to include? Do we need to have a button for addition or subtraction? Well, probably, those are probably like the bare minimum requirements and extra stuff might include square root or sine, cosine. Do we need to calculate those things in there? But if you're working with a client, you need to figure out what the requirements are for their project. Once you have the requirements all written out in great detail, it would be good to move on to maybe some wireframing. A wireframe is a general layout of your app or website. It doesn't contain colors or doesn't need to contain colors. Um, it doesn't need images, just draw out some squares, some shapes, where you want to put things. If you're building out a calculator, you could just draw out some squares for each number or a big square representing all the numbers and then draw out on the top like a little bar where you can have the the actual results pop up. Um, just show the general layout of what you're going to build. Next, we're going to want to possibly make a design. This would include more colors. Um, this would be a little more detailed. You'd probably want to decide on fonts here if you're going to have fonts. Um, this is more of an optional stage. If you are doing something larger for a client, then you'll probably want to have a design done. It's more professional. Um, if you're doing this for yourself, you're building out a to-do list, you don't necessarily need to make a design. A wireframe is good enough. And even for a wireframe, if you're doing this for yourself, just make it a mental wireframe. Just start thinking about how you want this to be. Because imagining your app or website will often bring up a lot of questions for uh, problems that will need to be solved. The next phase, which is pretty self-explanatory, is the development phase. 
This is where the developers take over, take the design and the requirements and the wireframe and make that happen. The last step in this process is actually deploying the website. This includes sending it to hosting or delivering it to the client. Um, if you're building this for yourself, then get some hosting and copy the files up onto your hosting provider and you've deployed your website. You're done. The first four steps in this list are the planning phase. You can spend as much or as little time here as you want, but keep in mind the less time you spend here, the more time you're going to be spending backtracking in the development phase to fix problems. If you have a client paying you a lot of money, you're probably going to want to get a really solid foundation from, the, from this planning phase. I would highly recommend doing this. If you're building for yourself, then you can spend a couple minutes planning out your project or maybe an hour and then get onto development. In the next video, I'm going to actually start building out a project. We're going to make a to-do list application just using vanilla JavaScript, no framework or anything. And I'm going to walk you through the steps of how you'd actually go about building something.